If you wanted to measure the length of a coastline, you might start by looking at a map and deciding to measure its length in units of, say, 20 kilometers. For this section of the coast, you measure that its length is approximately 80 kilometers, but you see that you've left out some smaller details, so you decide to measure again with a smaller unit, 10 kilometers, and you get a larger answer. When you measure with an even smaller unit, five kilometers, you get again a larger value for the length of the coastline. You think you might get a more accurate length if you try measuring the coastline on foot, say with a measuring unit of a pebble's diameter. Not only would that take a while, you'd also run into the same problem. The coastline seemingly gets longer the smaller measuring unit you use. In an extreme case, you could theoretically measure using a measuring unit the length of a single water molecule, but that would be practically impossible and would give a value for the coastline of millions of kilometers, which isn't intuitive or useful in any way. So how do we know where to stop zooming in? What's the length of the coastline? You bring up this problem to your mathematician friends, of course, to see if they have any ideas. They first entertain the thought of a perfect island with an ideal coastline, a triangle. But this isn't really a good model for any real coastline, since there's no intricacy or complexity, which your friends suspect is what's causing this paradox. So they rework their model and try to create a shape that has a rough edge, one that is, in some sense, infinitely rough. Starting with the triangular island, they take out the middle third of each edge and add a triangular spike. This coastline still isn't very complex, so they repeat, replacing each middle section of each new line segment with another smaller spike, and repeat, and repeat again, forever. This mathematical shape after repeating the process infinitely many times, is a fractal called the Koch snowflake. If we zoom in, we're met with more of the same detail or roughness along the edge, like with a real coastline. Your mathematician friends calculate the perimeter of this shape, or the coastline of this snowflake island, and they tell you that it's infinite. Benoit Mandelbrot a French-Polish-American mathematician in the 1900s, had the realization that to understand nature around us, we must view coastlines as fractals. He invented a new area of math called fractal geometry to better describe our world. Mandelbrot understood that it doesn't make sense to measure the length of a coastline, but instead to describe its roughness. He coined the term fractal dimension, which is a value that we can calculate to describe the complexity or roughness of any fractal. The Koch snowflake, for example, has a fractal dimension of approximately 1.26. Nature is made up of fractals, since nature is rough and intricate and also full of patterns. The crevices on this trunk, the blood vessels in our bodies, jagged mountain faces, even the fluffiest of clouds are fractals and can be better described with mathematics, specifically the mathematics of fractal geometry. Self-similar and recursive patterns are fundamental to how plants grow. Start with one branch or stem split into two, and repeat. There's no law telling nature to stop at any given iteration, so we can zoom in or out and see fractal patterns everywhere we look on both small and large scales. Mathematicians are excited by patterns and are even more interested in trying to understand them. When given seven words to describe his work in fractal geometry, Mandelbrot summarized it as beautiful, damn hard, increasingly useful. That's fractals.